Ray came back last time from Saint, from being in St. Louis. He wasn't living with Robbie at the time. He came back and he said, Mom, he said, if anything ever happened to me, just know that Tim did it. What are you talking about? He said, well, just know Tim don't never do his own dirty work. But I got that fatal call from her about Dre. And I didn't want to answer the phone. You know, I, I just didn't want to answer the phone. And then she hung up and she called right back. And then that's when she was like, well, you know, uh, uh, the detectives was here. And I read my heart is already slowing down, you know, and uh, to the point where they wanted her to go down to the morgue to identify it was him. That was it. You know, it was like, it was so surreal. Everything's just rolling around. I'm just like, not my son, you know, not my son. <sighs> not my son. What's up, good people? Welcome to another episode of our USA versus James Timothy Norman trial reenactment. Uh, we have been going at this for some months. Some months. I can't even, I forgot when we started, honestly. I'm gonna have to look back. But um, tonight we are continuing where we left off with the trial. Um, and um, continuing with the cross-examination of Big Ed. And then we start to move into the testimony of Tim Norman's friends. And then eventually we make it to Tim. So we got a few more episodes. And these are going to be the juicy ones because we're getting towards the end of the trial. Once we get into um, the uh, defense presenting their side of the case, it gets good. And then we wrap it up with the uh, 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 closing statements, which are also really good um, in, in so many ways. But thank you to everyone who is viewing this evening. Please hit that like button if you have not as of yet. Uh, also, please share this video. Um, and I didn't even put the little poll out here, but, you know, um, we'll be also live right after this. Well, I can say right after this at 845. Uh, we'll be live over there on the Vail B Reacts channel with another episode of Surviving Darius Crooks. Uh, we have an interesting show again, once again, this evening. Uh, so after this, once we're done, the fun doesn't end. We will. Well, I shouldn't say fun because this ain't necessarily fun. But y'all know what I'm saying. The uh, the content doesn't end. Uh, we'll be jumping right on over there. So with that, we're going to get this show rolling because we got to get this one done to get to the next one. And um, and we will. Um, I hadn't talked to the cast about this, but I am just going to stick to Wednesdays at 7 15. Uh, we'll see if that can happen about adding another day in. But me trying to juggle all this content is I'm trying to regroup some things, and I think I'm gonna just leave this in this time slot and I'll work around it because we only got a few more episodes and then you know we'll, we'll move into our next season of content. Um, but tonight we have our gracious uh cast. Uh, and tonight we have Robert, Precious, Shamika, uh, Marjan, and um, and Mocha Barbie should be joining us as well when she when she's able to join. So I'm gonna bring up everyone. We're gonna start with uh, oh, let me take this down. 
Gonna start with Robert. Uh, we got Precious, Shamika, and Margin. And then we're gonna do my share screen so we can bring up the document so the audience can follow along. And let me not get confused with which one because I got a bunch of them up. Okay, here we go. I think that's the one. And we're gonna get that adjusted. Oh, yeah, because we start with me. Give me a second to get it, get it all together. Usually, um, um, me not being the first person gives me time to fix all this. Okay, let me spread that out a little more. Slide that over a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. And then we'll put a little, put a little graphic up. What to the other graphics? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. All right. So um, on during our last uh, episode, we ended up, <clears throat> excuse me, we ended up cutting short uh, because of the sake of time. And we ended right at the cross when the cross examination was going to start with Big Ed. And so <clears throat> Mr. Leonard, Tim's attorney, starts with his questioning of Big Ed. And. Wait, is that correct? What are you saying? Is that? It's not Big Ed. We're doing the other guy. We're not Big Ed. It's yet. cross examination. Cross examination. Um, of, who? of who? Of who? Oh, the Ed guy. Well, not Ed guy. That Mr. Fruit or somebody. I don't know his name. Freud. Uh, let's see. What was the guy's name? Um, the, okay, Agent uh, Freud. Okay, Freud. Special Agent. Oh, how do I forget? Yeah. Okay. Big Ed next after this. I got a lot of content floating in my head. Yeah. <laughs> have I thought we was there? Did we ever do? We haven't done Big Ed yet. He's after this. Okay, that's why I got confused. Okay. Bear with me. All right. <clears throat> so cross examination <clears throat> of Agent Freud. Let me get in character. So is uh so the person who's reading for Freud knows who it is because I didn't have him listed. I ended up I'm reading. him. Okay, great. All right. Agent Freud, you talked about one of the subjects was traveling records. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you review the travel records to determine in 2015 and 2016 how many times Mr. Norman flew from California to St. Louis? I did. How many? I couldn't tell you that exact tell you the exact number, but he did travel between St. Louis and Los Angeles and other locations. Okay. And did you also determine that he drove from California to St. Louis during that time period as well? I would not have a flight record to reflect that. Well, you would never have a flight record for a drive, but you would for tolls, right? Based on who he called, that does not give location data. You will have to do a separate legal process to obtain the location data. I think we're on the wrong page. My question was, did you determine how many times Mr. Norman drove from California to St. Louis in 2015 and 2016. I did not. Okay. That's what I meant by troll tolls. Okay. <laughs> I did not. Because I'm trolling you. I know. <laughs> so you never looked into that one, right? Uh, wait, what? No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Did you determine in 2015 and 2016 how much money total in cash Mr. Norman received from the Sweetie Pies restaurant? I know he's broke. We did a financial analysis. I cannot tell you the exact amount of cash that he took in. Okay. And that would also assume that all of it made it to the bank, which we did not have no way of knowing. Of course. So as you sit here today... You don't know how much cash he received from Sweetie Pie's restaurants in 2015 and 2016, correct? I don't know how much he stole. I do not. Okay. Now you talked about, let's shift gears for a second. You talked about a guy named um, Big Ed or Eddie Chandler, right, sir? Yes. And you talked about a text that was sent, correct? Yes. And the text was a picture of Andre Montgomery? That's correct. Did you and your team determine from your investigation how many months it had been since Mr. Chandler had last seen Andre Montgomery before he took that picture? I did not. Okay. And did you interview Mr. Chandler? Didn't you? Oh, I did. You interviewed him. 
Now, with regards to Miss Ellis, you interviewed her as well, didn't you, sir? I did. You were right there. Yes. For the whole interview? Yes. Okay. And did you and your team make a historical sales site record for Mr. Yagnam and Andre Montgomery to determine if they ever had a meeting where Andre gave him information for an insurance application? We attempted to obtain the victim's sales site information, but it no longer existed at the time we served legal process. How many years did you wait Personally, a few months after I received the investigation, but I was not involved in the investigation at the time. It initiated with the city of St. Louis. Okay. Whatever you just referred to personally, what year was that when you tried? I began looking at this November 2019. Okay. To your knowledge, had any member of the team tried to get those records before you did in 2019? There was no team prior to that point. Okay, so the answer would be no. Correct. Okay, so just so we are all clear, as far as you know, law enforcement, you were the first guy in law enforcement to try to get Andre's records, and that was in 2019? As far as I know, yes. Okay, and did you indicate that there was a slide that showed that on the day Andre Montgomery was killed, that Mr. Norman made certain deposits, right? Yes. Did you determine how much cash he didn't deposit from the safes of the Sweetie Pies that day? No. I have no way of knowing how much was in the safe that day. I don't work there. Did you determine how much cash he had in a duffel bag that was with him that day when he was with Miss Ellis? I know they had at least the amount that was deposited in the bank. I'm talking about when he and Miss Ellis uh, was with Miss Ellis. Do you know how much money he had in a duffel bag with him at that point? No, I do not. Let's talk about Miss Ellis for a second, right? Okay. And you know from records that she was here on a Thursday prior to Andre Montgomery's murder, right? Yes. That she worked at Bottoms Up, right? That's correct. Did you ever go over to Bottoms Up or anywhere else and figure out how much money she made that day? We did not. Did you think to do that? I don't go to places like that. We didn't believe the information would still exist at the time. Did you try? I did not know. Did you? Did your team try? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And I think we'll go through each day. But if your answer is the same, you can tell me. Did your team try to figure out how much money she made on Friday at Bottoms Up? No. Did your team try to figure out how much money she made on Saturday at Bottoms Up? We asked her how much money she made, but she didn't have specific memory of that time she relayed to us. And on Sunday, <laughs> as if you didn't say that. <laughs> and on Sunday... Did you figure out how much money she made at Bottoms Up? The same answer I told you already, no. Let's talk about Andre Montgomery for a second. After his murder, you received all of the St. Louis Police Department records, right? Related to the homicide? Yeah. Yes. It is part of your investigation, correct? Yes. Was any GSR testing done on his hands or body? Not that I'm aware of. And just so the jurors know what we are talking about, what is GSR testing? So you know what we're talking about. Gunshot residue. Okay. Meaning that you can test someone's hands or clothing to see if they have fired a firearm. That was the theory once upon a time. What do you mean? They don't really rely, rely on that the way they did 10 years ago to determine that. Oops, I messed up again. <laughs> <laughs> really? You and your FBI agents don't testify in my, in my trials about GSR? Is that what you're trying to tell us? 
I have no idea what happens in your other trial, sir. <laughs> okay. But here is my question. Did anyone ever try to try to GSR test Andre Montgomery? As I stated other times to you, N O no. Okay. And a bunch of guns were recovered from the house on Natural Bridge Road where Andre had been, right? That's correct. And were they fingerprinted to see if Andre Montgomery's had handled any of them? I would have reviewed the lab reports. I don't recall that off the top of my head. Not to your knowledge, correct, sir? That I know of. Okay, nothing further. Anything? Other questions of the witness? No, Your Honor. May this witness be finally excused. No. What? <laughs> okay. If you will just be available, counsel, approach the sidebar. <laughs> so the proceedings were then held at sidebar. So just a reminder, that means that the attorneys go to the side of the judge's bench. Uh, we can't hear what they're saying. They play the white noise uh, that sounds like TV static, and they get to talking. So that's what's happening here. <laughs> Do you have any other witnesses, any other evidence? No, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have witnesses? We do, Judge. We are able to get one of them. He is here. He is ready to testify. We told him that it would be right up to the lunch hour. Okay. Okay. We're going to go ahead and break for lunch. As I understand it, you're going to rest in front of the jury right after lunch. Is that correct? Ms. Danis? That's correct, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to do, if it is agreeable, is to make a record on any motion for judgment of acquittal at the cross of the government's case when we take a break. You mean right now? Right. Okay, sure. Miss uh, Keela, Keela. Killian. Killian. <laughs> right. I'm trying try to get my <laughs> mouth to say it. <laughs> Killian uh, is going to argue. Uh, wait. Uh, okay, sir. So Miss Killian is going to argue that. So, and I think that if I'm not mistaken, I think that was like a, an assistant to them, like another, a new attorney or something, <laughs> an assistant. If I'm not mistaken, it's kind of coming back to me. Okay. So I'd like to go ahead and make that record, if it is agreeable. Sure. When the government formally rests, and it can be immediately after lunch, but again, in anticipation. Thank you. And I think uh, your honor indicated that we can supplement it with a written motion. You can. And what was your schedule of that? Is there any schedule for submission of that? Yes. I'd like it would end by Monday. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know uh, what your practice was. Yeah. I'm fine with giving you the weekend to put that together. That's fine. Okay, sure. Okay. So we will go ahead and excuse the jury now for lunch. I'm going to have them back at 1.30. Okay. So again, we will make the record on the motion, and then we will proceed. Sure. I'll go get Miss Killian, Killian uh, or is she, is she, or she is here, actually. All right. So then the court resumes and uh, uh, proceedings resume, resume in open court. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we're going to go ahead and break for lunch at this time. Again, I'll tell you what I'll tell you I'll tell you what I tell you each day at the lunchtime. It is a particular time when people are around the courthouse talking about different cases. Please avoid anybody talking about any case. And particularly, obviously, this case. I'll remind you again. Don't talk to anyone about the case in any manner, form, way, on the internet, social media, any way. Don't talk to anyone about the case. Please keep an open mind about the case until it is finally given to you to, to make the decision. Don't do any independent research of any kind into any of the issues. If you will leave your notebooks there on the chair, again, we're going to have some sandwiches brought in for you. If you want to take advantage of those, I'd ask that you be back and ready to proceed at 1.30. And we will be in temporary recess until 1.30. And then at 11.52 a.m., the proceedings stood in temporary recess. Court will be back in session if you will be seated. Counsel, for the record, as I understand it, the government intends to rest their case immediately upon the jury coming back after lunch. And the government has no more evidence to present. Is that correct? That's right, Your Honor. And by agreement of counsel, we agree that we will take up any motion for judgment of acquittal at the close of the government's evidence at this time. Although, they will formally arrest on the record immediately after lunch. And again, that's agreeable, Mr. Leonard, Ms. Rodriguez, and I, as I understand it, Ms. Killian is going to argue the motion for judgment of acquittal. Is that correct? Yes. And Ms. Killian, if you will step up here to the podium, I'll give you an opportunity to tell me anything anything you want to tell me with regard to any motion at the conclusion of the government's case. Yes, Your Honor. The defense would like to orally present a Rule 29 motion now that the government has arrested. However, we would... And I will give you an opportunity to supplement it with a written motion. And I had indicated to Mr. Leonard that I'll give you until Monday if you want to supplement it with a written motion. But go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. May I proceed with the motion? You may. Thank you. Count one of the superseding indictment charges Mr. Norman with conspiracy to commit murder for hire. Specifically, count one charges that Mr. Norman did knowingly Mr. Norman, should I start over for the benefit? No problem. Count one of the superseding indictment charges Mr. Norman with conspiracy to commit, to commit murder for hire. Specifically, count one charges that Mr. Norman did knowingly and intentionally combine, conspire, and agree to commit an offense against the United States of America to wit the crime of murder for hire in violation of Title 18 U.S.C. Section 19558 by using and causing others to use facilities of interstate commerce to wit cellular telephones with the intent that the murder of Andre Montgomery be committed in violation of the laws of the state of Missouri. And as for consideration of this, the receipt of and consideration for a promise and agreement to pay things 
a pecuniary, pecuniary value, mainly money, along with other benefits. There are four elements to this count one. The first element is that there was an agreement to murder Andre Montgomery. Two, Mr. Norman knew of this agreement to murder Andre Montgomery. Three, Mr. Norman intentionally joined this agreement to murder Andre Montgomery. And finally, four, Mr. Norman or someone else who had joined this agreement to murder Andre Montgomery normally used a cellular phone with the intent that that murder of Andre Montgomery be committed. The defense submits that the government presented insufficient evidence to support element one and two. Namely, the government presented evidence via the testimony of Terrica Ellis and Travail Hill. Through their testimony, we have learned that there was no agreement to murder Andre Montgomery and that was no evidence that defended, excuse me, Mr. Norman knew of this agreement or any agreement to murder Andre Montgomery. Accordingly, because of this, the government simply cannot satisfy element one and two and therefore cannot satisfy all four elements of 18 U.S.C. 1958. With regard to count two, that is, excuse me, count two of the superseding indictment, that's murder for hire, 18 U.S.C. 1958, and two, count two charges Mr. Norman with committing murder for hire, and that he aided and abetted the offense of murder for hire. Specifically, count two charges that Mr. Norman aided and abetted others, used and caused. You really are going to have to speak slower. And I'm not sure you necessarily need to read the indictment. Understood, okay. Then I will not do that for the remaining counts. The elements for count two of the superseding indictment, murder for hire, and the aiding and abetting of murder for hire, or one, Mr. Norman, at or about the time charged in this indictment, knowingly used a cellular telephone or caused another to use a cellular telephone. And two, that the use of that cellular telephone was done with the intent to murder Andre Montgomery in violation of the laws of the state of Missouri. And three, Mr. Norman promised to pay $5,000 as a consideration for the murder of Andre Montgomery. For the same reasons that the defense has submitted for count one, we also submit that there has been no evidence presented in the government's case in chief. Certainly no evidence through the testimony of Terrica Ellis and Mr. Hill that there was that Mr. Norman intended to commit the murder or have, excuse me, commit the murder for hire of Andre Montgomery. Because of that, elements one and two cannot be satisfied. Therefore, all elements of one, two, and three cannot be satisfied. With specific regard to the aiding and abetting, those elements likewise cannot be satisfied for the same reasons that Mr. Norman did not knowingly associate with, associate himself with this unlawful venture to murder Andre Montgomery. Finally, with regard to count three, that is the conspiracy to commit wire fraud and mail fraud under 18 U.S.C. 1349, the defense likewise submits that there was insufficient evidence submitted so far in light of the testimony of Special, Special Agent Faber. Ms. Ho with United of Omaha, Ms. Adams with Royal Neighbors, Ms. Collins on behalf of Americo, and Mr. Parrott on behalf of Foresters, Mr. Sullivan on behalf of Foresters, as well as the testimony of Special Agents Applebaum, Root, and Wood. There is no evidence that Mr. Norman voluntarily and intentionally joined the conspiracy to commit, excuse me, intentionally joined the conspiracy to commit the crimes of wire fraud and mail fraud. In light of that, Your Honor, the defense requests that the court grant our motion, or excuse me, our Rule 29 motion. Okay. All right. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. Ms. Davis. Ms. Carroll? Your Honor, I'll briefly recap the evidence as it occurred, not necessarily chronologically, chrono, chronologically, <laughs> chronologically, but Travell Hill testified that he met with a third party who told him that Tim, the defendant, wanted Andre dead. He met with Tim the day of the homicide and understood, leaving that conversation, that Tim wanted Andre dead. Because the first thing he did was go purchase a firearm, which he then used to kill Andre Montgomery. 
he sends a text message to Terrica Ellis, who testified she received a text message telling her to move prior to shooting Andre Montgomery. Terrica Ellis testified to her day loan efforts, first to the acquisition of a prepaid cellular phone that she used in conjunction with Mr. Norman, which was active solely for the day of the homicide that she used to locate Andre Montgomery throughout the day. Her location data puts her at the scene of the homicide. And again, she testified to receiving that text message from Tabell Hill, which is supported by the toll information, or I'm sorry, investigator Wood testified to. Then you have the testimony of Daryl Howard, who testified that three minutes after the homicide, the defendant calls him and tells him to go pick up $5,000 at the Chase Park Plaza and hold on to it. He arrives there, picks up the money, stays for a very brief time. Again, consistent with his location information. Two days later, he was instructed by Mr. Norman to deliver that money to Travail Hill, which he did. With regard to the conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud, I'd submit the text messages between Mr. Norman and Y.L. Yagnum. Specifically, Mr. Norman indicating the need to secure a life insurance policy on his nephew. The fact that he did not want to talk about it in front of Andre. And then Mr. Yagnum's direction to Mr. Norman to pretend like he is Andre, which he then subsequently did for the personal health information and interview with Americo. I would also like, I would also submit the internal misrepresentations on each life insurance policy, all of which all of the agents testified that the companies were relying upon and that had they known about any of these misrepresentations, it would have caused them at least to examine the policy further, even if it wouldn't have resulted in a different outcome. So with that, Your Honor, I'd ask that the court deny the defendant's motion pursuant to Rule 29. I also wanted to ask the court about a bail finding prior to the government resting as well when the court wanted to do that. Uh, we can talk about that in just a moment. Let me just go ahead and address the motion for judgment of acquittal at the close of all of the evidence. Again, I understand defense counsel's argument in the case, particularly as it relates to the conspiracy counts in count one and count three whether or not there, there was an argument by two or more people to commit the offense. The agreement, of course, can be expressed or implied. And as, as I look at all of the evidence in the case, and as to all three counts, the court believes that there is sufficient direct and circumstantial evidence to support a jury that could find each of those elements of each of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt. Again, there is sufficient direct and circumstantial evidence, particularly with regard to the conspiracy to commit the wire and bank fraud. There are inconsistencies in the different applications taken together. They are material and could constitute a basis again for the jury to find beyond a reasonable doubt each of the elements of that conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud. Again, going back through the evidence as to all three counts, there is sufficient evidence from which the jury could find each of those elements beyond a reasonable doubt. So for that reason, the court is going to deny the motion for judgment of acquittal. Again, I'm going to give you until Monday to supplement that motion with any written motion. The government has brought up the issue with regard to the statements and furtherance of the conspiracy, the offenses of co-conspirators. Anything you want to tell me with regard to that, Ms. Rodriguez, Mr. Leonard, Ms. Killian? 
No, Judge, we'll stand on the record. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, based on the record, and the court had previously preliminarily approved the admission of most of those statements. There was at least one statement that the government offered that the court granted the defense motion to exclude because the court determined that it was not in furtherance of the conspiracy. But the statements that have been committed, the court does find they were statements of co-conspirators, both known and unknown. Unknowing co-conspirators in furtherance of the conspiracy and that those statements are properly admitted. So the court will make the finding for the record. I'll supplement that with a written finding as well. Now, anything further at this time for the record, Mr. Leonard? Anything further, Mr. Leonard? I was on mute. Not at this time, Judge. <laughs> okay. Anything further on behalf of the government? No, Your Honor. We'll be in temporary recess until 1.30. We're back on the record. Yes, sir. Once issue, one issue that we have, which is a little difficult for us, is that were Mr. Norman is incarcerated. They have him in on what's called a hold. So that would mean we wouldn't be able to meet with him is my understanding. So we would like some sort of judicial interference intervention. It really makes it difficult to prepare your client and to meet with your client under those circumstances. I think it is because of the COVID issue. I don't know what the circumstances are in St. Geneva County. I'll try to find out what the circumstances are. To my knowledge, they have never kept you from meeting with Mr. Norman. I don't know whether or not something has occurred with COVID. I'll try to find out. We just raised that. I appreciate that. We just raised that because it is our concern coming into the weekend. Okay. So you are concerned. Just so that I'm clear. It is not today, tonight, but it is over the weekend. Exactly. And you want to have the opportunity to be able to meet with him. Exactly. Okay. All right. And we are happy to mask up or do whatever they want, obviously. Okay. All right, we will be in recess until 1.30. And then the, uh, at 12.04 p.m., the proceedings stood in temporary recess and the proceedings, um, well, before I wanted to say that um, Miss uh, Killian was like, I want to say like a young 20-something, like she was probably just out of law school. So it seemed like it, it, she was, um, I wouldn't say interning, I forgot when they, uh, when they first start. Uh, so you could tell she was real new and this was like giving her her chance to be in a courtroom and reading in front of a judge and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, then the uh, proceedings resume in open court. Counsel, we will go ahead and get to the jury. And as I understand it, the government is going to indicate that they have no further witnesses and rest. Is that correct? Yes. And counsel, you are ready to proceed. We are, Judge. 
do you want the witness up there now or do you want to wait? No, we can wait. We will go ahead and get the jury. So then at 1.40 p.m., the proceedings stood in, uh, proceedings resumed in open court. When we broke for lunch, the government was presenting evidence. Ms. Danis, Ms. Carroll, does the government have any further evidence? No, Your Honor. At this time, the government rests. Ms. Rodriguez, the government rests. Ms. Rodriguez, Mr. Leonard, are you ready to proceed? Is that correct? We are, Your Honor. We will call Mr. Chandler first. If you will step up here, the clerk will administer the oath. If you will speak into the microphone, it will help amplify, amplify your voice. There is a bottle of water there next to you. If you would like that. And counsel, you may proceed with questions of the witness. Who's Miss Mark Rodriguez? I'm 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 big head, so mm. Rodriguez. Oh that was, and Mocha. Margin, are you available to take over that role? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Hold on. I'll just do it for right here. Oh, Thank I you, Judge. Well. Can you hear me? That was it. It was just one line. It was just one oh, line. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Oh, no, no. She's the one um, questioning. So, yeah. Okay. You want to be big head then? I'm Vel and I'd be. Um... Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, you ready? Mm hmm. Mr. Chandler. Mr. Chandler, my name is Gloria Rodriguez. I'm one of the defense attorneys. I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a few questions today. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. Let's start with your name. Please take your name for the record. Ed Chandler, sir. It's senior, okay. rather. Senior. Not <laughs> sir. <laughs> Do you always go by a different name? Yes. Can we? Can you please let the jury members know what other names you go by? They call me Big Ed. <laughs> Big Ed. Did you say Big Ed? Big Ed. Okay, are you testifying in response to a subpoena that we serve on you? Yes. Okay, have you previously been subpoenaed by the government? Yes. Okay, have you been interviewed by the government? Yes. Specifically, these people here to my left? Yes. Okay, sir, I'm going to start with just some background questions. Then we'll get into a little more substantiated material, all right? Okay. Sir, how old are you? 47. And where do you currently reside? Kayoki, Illinois. Okay. How long have you lived in that area? Probably about 14 years. Where did you go to high school? Beaumont. Objection. Relevance. The objection is sustained. What is the highest level of education you received? 12th. Okay. High school diploma? Yes. Let's switch gears to your occupation. Have you ever worked for Sweetie Pie's restaurant? Yes. Is the pie good? Do you remember approximately what year you had to start working for Sweetie Pie's? Maybe uh, 2011, somewhere around there. How's that fried chicken? Okay. And do you remember what was your position or your title while you were working for them? Security. Is that the same position you held as security the whole time that you were at Sweetie Pies? Yes. Can you describe briefly for the jury what your duties and responsibilities were while you worked as security? Pretty much just did security. Make sure nobody came in the restaurant trying to rob the place or keep an eye out uh, for Tim and Miss Robbie. I was pretty much their eyes and their ears, making sure management didn't do anything. They weren't stealing or anything like that in the restaurant. They're stealing pies? Mm -hmm. As part of your duties, do you obtain a concealed and carry license for a firearm? I already had it. Okay. Let me ask you this then. Prior to that employment, 
you have any other security employment? I used to be an auxiliary police officer and also a correctional officer. Okay. She says, okay, a lot. At some point while you were working at Sweetie Pies, you remember there being a TV show? Yeah, she says that a lot because she's like very nervous, seems very inexperienced and like bumbling. That's what around. I figured. Yeah, that's that's a uh yes. <laughs> the show was called Sweetie Pies, you idiot. And what was the name of the TV show? Welcome to Sweetie Pies. <laughs> and where was that filmed? It was filmed at all of the restaurants. With respect to the volume of customers visiting the restaurants. Were you able to see any difference in volume from people coming as a result of the TV show? I couldn't tell you what it was like before I got there, but after I got there, it was a crowd. I mean, lines wrapped around the building, people waiting in line for maybe an hour just to get in the door, and then another 15 to 20 minutes. So, yeah. Was that any particular location? That was pretty much all of them. And so let's focus on the year 2016. Do you remember how much Sweetie Pie's locations there were? I believe it was five. Okay. I want to ask you to walk us through that. Let's name one. The upper crust. Objection. Relevance, Your Honor. Right. <laughs> Council, will you approach the sidebar? Now, this is, oh, my God, it's so many of these kind of interruptions because she was just bubbling around. And, okay, so proceedings were held at side by side. I don't know what, what was happening. I just know it was <laughs> obvious she was incompetent, and the judge kept uh, calling her out about it, basically. What's the relevance of this, counsel? It is merely two questions. Just to establish which one Andre came into and how we know that he's the one who took the picture and where that occurred. Then why don't you just <laughs> ask him those questions? <laughs> you ask him how many locations. <laughs> now that's not relevant. Just ask him the questions you just indicated. <laughs> because he worked at all of them, so? Just ask the location. That's what I just did, though. Oh, wow. I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> no, you didn't. You asked how many locations there are. And he said five. And I said, walk me through those are, where those are. Just ask the question, what's the location that you saw? I'm Andre? sorry. What's not That's relevant? All. What is the objection? You want him to walk through all of the locations. Golly gee, just tell us where they were. Yeah. Just ask the question. I'll, uh, I'll sustain the objection. So don't ask how many there were? How is it relevant how many there were? To see where he was floating around. The only question is what you have said to me is what's re relevant is that he saw Andre at a location. What location? So that's it. Okay. I did now, not know it was that bad. <laughs> I did not know it was that bad. <laughs> now, just for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading Mr. Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> I was one. I was like, what am I missing? Okay. <clears throat> just for the record, Judge, you <laughs> previously had indicated that the financial condition of Mr. Norman was relevant as of March 2016, which is what she is talking about. So this would be clearly also be relevant to the issue as well. I did indicate, and we may as well clar clarify that here at the sidebar. I did indicate that this financial company may have some relevance at the time period before and after the murder. The number of Sweetie Pie's locations doesn't. There is no evidence that it is related to his financial condition. We have to establish the foundation somewhere, Judge. How do we introduce that otherwise? There is no evidence that he has 1% interest, a 5% interest, 
there is no evidence of any of that. Sure, but we are certainly allowed to do that. We have to do it witness by witness, Judge. I disagree with you that this question is at all related to his financial condition. By the way, you have gotten in lots of evidence about what you purport to be evidence of his financial condition. Now, whether he has a house, whether he has multiple cars, whether he has access to cash, none of that actually does directly to his financial condition. None of that goes to his financial condition because he may or may not own the house. He may or may not own the cars. He may or may not be the owner of the cash. In any event, in any event, you have put in a lot of innuendos about his financial condition. This doesn't go to his financial condition. The question that you ask him, and I don't want to make a big deal of this because I don't. It's just one question about where they were. That's all I was going to ask. Gosh. The issue is, and the only relevant, relevant evidence is where did you see Andre and at which location that was? Okay. Okay, thanks, Judge. Then the proceedings uh, resume in open court. Counsel, if you rephrase the question. Yes, gladly, Judge. So instead of having you walk us through the five Sweetie Pies restaurants that were open at the time, you remember working mostly at certain locations over others? Yes. What locations were those? The Manchester location and the location on Lindbergh uh, and 270. Okay. And so I kind of want to direct your attention to March 2016. Do you remember that time period in your life, sir? Yes. At the time in March 2016, were you familiar with a person named Andre Montgomery? Yes. Okay. And how long had you known Andre? I had known him for a minute throughout the show. Okay. And what was your relationship like with Andre Montgomery? How's she going to let us out? What's a minute? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, in the sense of courts. <laughs> no time frame. I mean... He was uh, Miss Robbie's grandson. I mean, we spoke when we saw each other, and that's about it. That's why I didn't care about telling Tim to go get him. Okay. And how often had you seen him at the restaurant? Well, with the location I was at, he was never really at the location I was at. He was always pretty much wherever Miss Robbie was at. Hmm. Oh, sour pies. Oh, let me get back in character. Okay, so let me tell, let me ask you this. Prior to March 2016, do you remember the last time you seen him prior to March 2016? Probably it may have been maybe nine or ten months. Around there. Okay. What I'd like to show you an exhibit, in an exhibit that was previously admitted as Government's Exhibit 2E, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. That, oh, excuse me, Big Ed Rough Rider, that's your cell phone? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Do you see the picture of Andre in the white shirt? Yes. Okay. Can you read the date on that? 3-6-2016. Okay. And was that a photo that you had taken of Andre? Yes. Okay, now before I ask you any more about the text messages, I want to ask you, do you remember working that day? Yes. Do you remember what restaurant you were at? Yeah, Sweetie Pie's on Lindbergh and 270. Okay, do you remember what time you got to work that day? Usually I get there around 4 o'clock. Okay, and can you tell me a little bit about the layout? of the restaurant where you're where you were okay 
When I took the picture, I was in the office. When you walk in the office, you like pretty much walk straight in, make a quick right, and then you're at the office. You have the small office, and then you have the area where the cook at, and where well, they cook at, and then you can uh, look straight directly to the takeout window. So from the office area where you were working, can you see like the whole entrance of where people would be coming in? I can see part of it. Like I said, I see the camera right here. And then if they are standing at the cash register, then yes, I can see most of the customers when they came in. Okay. So in order for them to see, in order for you to see them, you had your line of sight and also a camera. Is that a surveillance camera? Yes. Okay. So they were to come in through the front door of the location. What direction would you need to take to get into your office? You would have to make a quick right. And then once you make a quick right, then there is a door right there. Uh, because if you would have kept straight and made the right, then you would have rent went right into the restroom. I don't know why that matters when it's like, did you take yeah. a picture of Andre or not? Like it, all this extra stuff is unnecessary. Okay. So, and so you indicate you were in your office when you took that picture. Yes. Prior to you taking that picture, had anything happened that maybe caught your attention? And the other thing is he took the picture of the surveillance camera. Like, not the angle he was at. He took a picture of the surveillance <laughs> camera catching on. She's on not her. helping this. She's not helping this at all. No. Uh, what do you mean? Just as far as when I took the picture or? Yeah. Like, right before you took the picture, was there anything that had? No. Nothing? No. Had you heard any chatter about? Objection to the leading. The objection is sustained. When you were there working, had anyone brought it to your attention? Objection. Calls for hearsay. Let her finish the question. Thank you, Judge. Had anyone come to you or had anyone said anything without telling, you, telling me what they said? Bring to your attention that Andre Montgomery was in the restaurant? Well, when he got there, I was sitting at the camera and I was just watching. And I heard some of the girls say, oh, Andre, what's going on? What are you doing here? And I looked at the camera, looked up, and I'm like, oh, man. So I went out and I said, man, what's up, nephew? Uh, what are you doing here? And he's like, man, I'm here for a couple of days shooting a video. And he said, I'll be here for a couple of days. And then I knew to warn Tim and say, you got a little time to get here. <laughs> so uh, I said, are you cool? Because, you know, I was faking like I actually was uh, his friend. You know, you got to be close. Uh, keep your enemies close, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I'm cool. And then I said, not for long in my head. <laughs> not to him, though. So after he did that, I said, well, I'm going to go back and finish my job and text Tim like he told me to do if I ever saw you come in town. So all of the girls uh, are in line. And the people in the back came out and started talking to him. And I was also jealous of that. And after that, that's the last time I saw him because I had told Tim, come get him now, man. And do you remember where you were when you had that conversation with him, setting him up? I came from the back because I was doing what Tim told me to do to make sure it was him. And I walked around the front of the counter to where he was, like right before you get ready to place your order for the food. Was there anyone else around the two of you while you were having that conversation, you know, to set them up? Yeah, the girls in the front line. And I believe Norvell was the manager that day. So Norvell was there. Okay. I'm going to direct your attention to part of the text message thread. Do you see there's a young lady there standing with Andre? Yes. Do you recognize her? Never seen her. Was there anyone else that's not in the photograph that was with Andre that day? 
It was a young guy that was with him, but he was standing at the door to the far left. It was a guy on the left, like standing at the door the whole time. So remember, Andre had basically a bodyguard for lack of mm -hmm. a better, you know, y'all yeah. know what I'm saying. Uh, mm -hmm. so that would have been that guy. It was a young guy. Okay. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. Yeah. Okay. And so let me ask you, when you saw Andre, had you taken that picture before you spoke to him or after you spoke to him? I took it after I spoke to him. Okay. That's dirty. Ooh, that's dirty work. Ooh, that's dirty work. Okay. So why did you take that picture again? Because it was just strange for Andre to just pop up in the restaurant like that. You know, I was always sending pictures to Tim or any of the managers anytime anybody got fired or anybody wasn't there or anything that goes on in the restaurant. I always sent it to him first. That's why I took the picture. Y'all, that makes a whole lot of sense, don't it? Mm -hmm. Lying, <laughs> lying under oath. Lying yeah, under I sent ten pictures of anybody who you know come in the restaurant. And they ain't been in in a couple weeks. Let's see them. Okay, and you remember sending this picture to anyone else? Uh, I believe Chris, the other okay. player in this. <laughs> Would that be White Boy Chris? Yes. Chris Carroll. Yes. If you know, do you remember getting a response back from either? Camel Hips Tim or Chris? No. From neither? No, because they knew what that meant. That was the sign. Did any, did any, did you get any response from anyone there asking you to hold Andre? No, because they knew what signal that was. Ask you to make sure he doesn't leave? No. Ask you to make sure he stays in the restaurant? No. Can't had take any, care of him on site. Had anyone asked you to harm Andre? No. What did Andre do after you had that conversation? I mean, he sat there. We had a conversation. And like I said, we I went back to the office and he talked some more to the uh to talk to some more of the employees. After that, he left. He got something to eat and he left. Okay. Was that the last time you saw Andre? Yes. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about his funeral. Okay. Jesus. That's a big shift. Right. Were you there at the funeral? Yes. Do you remember where it was? It was in Lubbock, Texas. In Texas? Yes. Do you remember who invited you to the funeral? You know, because it's like a wedding. Yes, I do remember Tim. Did he say anything to you when he... Objection, hearsay. The objection is sustained. Was there any reason given to you for warning your presence at the funeral? Objection. Calls for hearsay. The objection, again, is sustained. Can we approach the sidebar? Approach the sidebar. And then the proceedings were held at the sidebar. I have tried to be liberal about letting you comment when it is Ms. Rodriguez's witness. So go ahead. Now in the future, if this is Ms. Rodriguez's witness, she's going to make she is going to make any comments for the record. If it is your witness, you're going to make the comments. Again, it is to avoid having multiple people argue it in the court. Having said that, go ahead and tell me what you want to tell me. Judge, the statements are not offered for truth. They are offered for the effect upon the listener and why he took certain actions to go to the funeral. There is nothing about the truth or falsity of the statements. Well... Why don't you tell me what they are? Why do you anticipate the answer is what do you anticipate the answer is going to be? He went at security. How is that relevant? Because he's going to testify that he was asked to be there armed because Tim had fear for his safety. 
It doesn't mean if it is true or false, but he went there with a gun because he was told there was a fear for safety. Again, there is nothing about the truth. Now, how he got a fear for safety and literally no one has talked to Tim. <laughs> no one had talked to Tim. He had disappeared. He probably the truth there. came out what he did. Exactly. That is being offered for the truth of the matter. Why he took the gun, Judge? The court is going to sustain the objection. Pose another question. Then the he just shut it down. He didn't even bother answering. <laughs> He's just like, this is what I say. And then, uh, so then the proceedings resume in open court. Uh, Vail, I need to take a break. Okay. You know, we're going to end it here because I'm, I'm getting close to the start of the other show. What we'll do is, I think next week, we just extend the time and then make it two hours. And then we can start to put more of a dent in it. Um, okay. So with that, I'm going to let Robert um, Any final words, Robert? No, I am uh, All this time I've been amazed At Court proceedings And just how devious People can be In going to court They swear that they're going to tell the truth and they might as well swear that they're going to lie as much as they can. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so devious. Uh, I guess, I hope this is not saying that this is uh, a uh, approximation of the world. Because I would like to think that the world is not getting that bad. But this has certainly opened my eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, we thank you for your time again. We will see you next week, and we'll we'll do an extended live. Uh, that way we can get through more. And thank you All so right. much. All right. And then y'all, uh, audience, put your hand clapping emojis and your cheer emojis for our cast and the great job that they uh, have done this evening. We really appreciate them. And then I'm going to let Margin go up next. Uh, Margin. I I didn't do anything too much, but thank you for everything you do. I know you're so busy all the time. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm juggling a lot. Just, yeah, we're trying to figure it all out. Good night. All right, you have a good night. And uh, Shamika? Yes, uh, just thank you, Vale. And um, from reading this, I get the idea that... Um, Poor Andre was just smart. Whether I, in my opinion, or my feeling is that whether he came back to St. Louis or not, um, as, as long as um, Tim had him marked, I mean, he was going to get him mm -hmm. regardless, I think. Yeah, and that was Tim's third attempt at his life. Mm -hmm. so, I think, yeah. I think yeah. he probably would have worked on stuff and. And in California, um, yeah, I just don't think he, as long as uh, Tim had it out for him, unfortunately, Andre didn't have a future. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, say, I, I agree. And they said that, uh, I think in the closing argument, we're going to hear that too. Um, well, thank you so much again, friend, thank you. for um, reading this evening, doing a wonderful job, and we will see you next week. All righty. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. And Precious. Like she said, Tim was gonna not he wasn't gonna stop until he till it was done, you know, mm -hmm. by any means necessary. I felt like and the more we read these transcripts, you could just tell his lawyers of both of them are dumb and they're just trying to make anything stick at this point. They didn't even need any witnesses. Mm -hmm. They, they could have just said <laughs> after Tim yelled, I didn't do it, that was it. Right. <laughs> That was the end of the trial, really, right there. But uh, it's always a fun time. Yeah, I'll see you guys next week. All right. See you next week. Thank you. All right. So that brings this show to an end. I got to rush us out with our closing. Thank you to my moderators. I see Alice and whoever else may be over there on the front end moderating. Greatly appreciate you. And um, with that, we will. I will see you. Uh, I have it scheduled for 845. I'm sure I'm going to be a couple minutes late, but about to head on over there to the Vail B Reacts channel. So if you're uh, looking for more uh, content from Vail B, uh, join me over there and um, we will see you uh, there. So I'll send you out with um, a trailer and uh, I'll see y'all in a few minutes.
and get your, get your drinks and stuff. This is going to be a good one. We got a good show for y'all tonight over there on Veil B Reacts. So the plan with this is like what we're doing. So when Dre came back the last time from Saint, from being in St. Louis, he wasn't living with Robbie at the time. He came back and he said, Mom, he said, if anything ever happened to me, just know that Tim did it. What are you talking about? He said, well, just know Tim don't never do his own dirty work. But I got that fatal call from her about Dre. And I didn't want to answer the phone. You know, I, I just didn't want to answer the phone. And then she hung up and she called right back. And then that's when she was like, well, you know, uh, uh, the detective was here. And I read my heart is already slowing down, you know, and uh, to the point where they want her to go down to the morgue to identify that was him. That was it. You know, it was like, it was so surreal. Everything's just rolling around. I'm just like, not my son, you know, not my son. Not my son. 